हाय सानवी मैंने छे कोबी बहु गमे एस्पेशली लाल कोबी मैंने लाल कोबी न शाक गमे और संभारो भी गमे सो वो ब्रिक एंड ड्यू आ कोबी नो हमें साइंस प्रोजेक्ट बनावे सो दिस टाइम ओके फर्स्ट थिंग आई डिड इज लाइक वॉश द कोबी एंड आई प्रिपेयर्ड इट लाइक दिस नाउ व्हाट आई एम गोना डू इज आई एम गोइंग टू यूज दिस मैंडोलिन स्लाइसर मिस मैंडोलिन स्लाइसर हैज अ ब्लेड एंड आई कैन एडजस्ट द डेप्थ ऑफ दैट ब्लेड and this blade is going to cut the kobi i have my cutting board here and a container on the other side so with this cutting board i'm going to uh start slicing the kobi see this slices uh the kobi really well and as it slices i'm going to put it into the container so i'm just going to keep slicing the kobi and make little thin strips of kobi like this okay just keep watching Okay, with the leftover kobi, I'm going to just cut it with my big knife. So I got my big knife and I'm just going to cut it. Okay, you see all that? This is all my kobi. Doesn't it look cool? Doesn't it look kind of like hair? You can hang it up next to your hair and be like, "Hi." And that's your hair. That's fine. Did you know kobi is a cruciferous vegetable? The cruciferous vegetables include mustard, kale, broccoli, all different types of vegetables, leafy greens as well as round big vegetables like cabbage. Now, it becomes really obvious that they're cruciferous vegetables when you look at the seed. So next time you go to the grocery store or to the Home Depot or some sort of um uh home home improvement store look for the seeds and you'll see a, a similarity between uh cabbage seeds and all other cruciferous vegetables okay now what we're going to do in our science experiment is we're going to use salt we're going to get some salt this one is sea salt that doesn't matter basically salt is primarily sodium chloride and what we're going to do is we're going to take a bunch of salt and just like this and we're going to sprinkle it all over the kobi okay so we're going to mix it up and let the salt get all in the kobi okay keep going and keep going now immediately after you add the salt you're going to see it's kind of shiny it's got a nice shiny color to it now we're going to explain what that happens right when we come back so a little more salt a little more shaking Now I'm going to cover it with something and I'll come back to it. Let's use this cover right here. Boom, it's covered and we're going to come back to this in a few moments and do our next step. Okay, Sanvi, it's been about 20 minutes. 20 minutes and this is the product now. We have this wet, shiny kobi, but you know what? There's still a lot more that this can go through. So you can see it's super wet. My hands are super wet when I touch it. So if I'll just use a spoon and I'll mix it. I'm going to give it a nice happy mix. Get it all mixed and happy. Break up any pieces of kobi that are kind of stacked together still in that uh, sort of shape. Just kind of break it up a little bit. Allow the salt to get access to all the surface of the kobi, all the surfaces of the kobi. So give it some breaking up. We're going to mix it, keep mixing it a little bit, and then we're going to say, "Okay, that's fine. I'm going to cover it." Hi Santan, it's been now one whole hour that this has been sitting with the salt. Look at how soggy it is. It's gotten super soggy and it's also a little bit wet. And if you can see, there's a little bit of liquid at the bottom. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is wring this out. Ani nicho bi some. We're going to wring it out. like a wet washcloth. So we're going to squeeze it all out in our hands. Squeeze, you can see all the water coming out. That's liquid inside the cabbage. We're going to squeeze. 
let it all drip down. And I'm gonna put this leftover cabbage that's in my hands, and I'm gonna put it in this plate here so we can see what's going on. Okay, we're gonna keep squeezing until we get all this cabbage juice out. Wow, look at all that juice coming. Here, this might help to help you see it. Whoa, so much coming out. Don't worry, we're gonna eat all this. Nothing's going to waste. Okay, we got this, another big cabbage ball, okay? Look at these balls of cabbage we're making. Looks, looks good already. Okay, squeeze, oh man, look at all that purple. All that jamburyo juice. Okay, we're gonna keep squeezing. Okay, look at this, another ball. Look at this, we got three cabbage balls here. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Probably get one or maybe one and a half more balls out of this. Squeeze, oh man. Keep going. All right, almost there. Keep going. Look at that. So much cabbage juice. Okay, we're almost there. A little bit more. We gotta get it. Okay, we're gonna squeeze. Nice. Look at all this good stuff. And take the rest over. Squeeze. Okay. Now we have all this juice. We're gonna pull it out into this beautiful cup here. So we'll just give this a quick wipe, make sure we have a clean working surface, which is something you should always do. Have a nice clean working surface so you can have a, a clear mind when you're working. And we're just gonna pull out all this beautiful cabbage juice. Look at that, pretty cool. Okay, we got this beautiful cabbage juice, and we'll put that in there, put it aside. Look at this. That's pretty fun. Okay, and we got the balls. We got the cabbage balls and the cabbage juice. So now we're just gonna focus on the cabbage juice. So what happened? We went from a cabbage to this juice. So we have an explanation for why that's so. What's happening is that we're taking the cabbage symbolized by these rectangular uh, structures here and we're adding salt to it. That's what we're doing here. That's step one. So now cabbage cells and all plant cells are cuboidal or rectangular. They have to shape something like this and they're very rigid. When you add salt, you what you do is you make a very hypertonic environment over here where the salt is. A hypertonic environment causes all the liquid uh, from the cells to come out. And that's what this second green arrow is showing. All the liquid, which happens to be purple in this case, is coming out uh, the, through osmosis. So we make a hypertonic environment with the salt and the liquid, the water, and everything else inside the cells comes flying out of the cells as the cells crumple up. And I didn't have a diagram of the cells crumpled up over here. But you can make uh, certain that the cells are crumpled up as shown by these cabbage balls here. Definitely um, a report for the crumpling of these cells. Okay, so uh, you add salt that makes a hypertonic environment. The water comes out of the cells, pops the cells, and then uh, we end up with all this cabbage juice as uh, the uh, uh, take-home product from uh, this process here. Okay, now we understand osmosis and hypertonic, interesting words that you can use. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this juice and we're gonna see what happens when it reacts to acid and base. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of juice here and a little bit of juice there. Make sure it's about 50-50. Okay, good. And we're gonna make sure we have a clean working surface here. If you want, you can taste this juice. It's probably gonna be super salty. Let me see. Mmm, mmm, yeah. Yeah, it's totally gross. Don't do that. But it's actually kind of nice, actually. Um, 
I'd, I would add it to a soup, no problem, but it's super salty right now. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, make an acid and a base solution. Now, I'm sure you know what this here is. This is lemon juice. You ever taste the lemon juice? Super sour. Lemon juice, orange juice, all different types of sour juices, citrus juices, they're sour because they're full of acid. This is just water. But we're gonna get a very special ingredient called baking soda. Baking soda is a base. And when you add it to water, it's gonna fizz a little bit because it's so basic and its conjugate acid is uh, uh, carbon dioxide. And so when that uh, 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 reacts inside water, the carbon dioxide, well, you might think that's a gas. That's what you have in the air, right? And so carbon dioxide forms into bubbles and comes out of the liquid and just leaves the, the, the environment, leaving a very basic solution in this water. So now we added some carbon dioxide or some baking soda to this water. We've made it really basic. So this is a nice base for us to work with. And we're gonna just keep adding a little bit of baking soda until I don't see any more powder in the, in the bottom of the glass. And then I go a little bit beyond that so that it does form a little bit of powder. So I know we've uh, gotten as much uh, uh, basic uh, nature that we can in this solution. Cool. Now we're gonna run our experiment. The experiment is what's gonna happen to this, uh, this color here when we add an acid or a base to that um, solution. So I have here two chumchis, got cheese, and we're gonna take a spoonful of the acid, full on spoonful, and add it to this. Let's see which color it turns, ready? Oh man, oh man, this turned a totally different color. Look at that, isn't that nuts? It's a bright red color, magenta. Okay, so that totally changed the color there. Now let's see what happens if we add some base to this one. Oh, it's changing a little bit. That was just one spoon. Let's see, has it changed a little bit? It's more blue now. That wasn't nearly as dramatic as the other one. Okay, let's add just more of this baking soda just directly to it. Let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, okay, really nothing. Okay, so now we learned. This is about as blue as it's gonna get. Wow, oh, that's very deep and rich. Such a rich blue. Oh man, so pretty. Oh wow, look at that. I, I actually didn't ever see this color before. Um, that's really cool. So let's put away our acids and bases. And now we learned what happens when we have uh, an acid and a base go into uh, our purple cabbage juice. So you might be asking, why did it change color? We had this huge dramatic change in the color from the red cabbage juice. It went from this color to the red color versus the blue color. So why did that happen? When we extracted this red cabbage, this purple cabbage juice, this purple color comes from a chemical called anthocyanin. There's an anthocyanin chemical and it has a general structure like this here. Now, when you add some acid to this, what happens is you make a modification to this region right here in this chemical so that it turns out red. So it has a color that looks more like red. Now, what happens if you add some base? If you add some base, you make another change in the structure and that color is going to be blue. So let's see it here now together. You make a tiny change over here and you get a red color. You make a tiny change here and you get a blue color. So that's a great lesson for you to keep in mind that the color from any given molecule comes from its chemical structure, which can be modified sometimes with an acid or a base to give you a different color. So that's something to keep in mind and as you continue in your science education. Now we're gonna get a little bit crazy. We're gonna take the original cabbage juice, the original purple cabbage juice, that's not red, that's not blue, that's not blue, that's not red. We're gonna take the original and we're gonna paint some baby donkeys. Hi, there's a baby donkey, hi. Okay, we're gonna paint Mr. Baby Donkey and Mrs. Baby Donkey. By using this paintbrush, we're gonna dip it and let's see how this turns out. 
We'll dip it into the, uh, the cabbage juice and we're going to give this guy a nice purple coloring. Now I've, I drew these drawings with Sharpie because Sharpie is water fast, meaning that it's, it's not soluble in water. So even if you apply water to it, it doesn't move around and it doesn't get solubilized. It doesn't um, um, get moving. It doesn't spread around. Now we have our purple baby donkey. Hi. And then we're gonna give it some lemon juice to give it some highlights. Okay. We have our glass here. We're gonna put a little bit of lemon juice. And then we're gonna take our second brush and give it some highlights. This is a, the second brush, a small brush. And we're going to dip it into the lemon juice. And then we're gonna come in. Oh, that's so cool. And we're just gonna give it some pink highlights. Whoa. Oh, that's so cool. Oh man, that's really cool. Okay, that's cool. So now we have a pink and purple baby donkey. And we're gonna let this dry. Okay, our painting has now dried. Look at that. So we have the purple color from the cabbage and actually it turned out super dark. It looks great on the page. I think I might use this uh, in the future. It's such a great color. It uh, accents the Sharpie really well. And then here you can see where I gave highlights with the small brush with the lemon juice. And that turns super bright pink. So that's a fun, fun little magic trick you can do. So you can paint it, give it a wash while it's wet. You can give it a quick touch with the acid in the lemon juice and it'll turn nice and pink. So now this is something you can try. Get some uh, drawing paper, something that has something already printed out. And instead of using markers or crayons to color, you can grab this, your cabbage juice to paint. And then you can grab a little bit of lemon juice to add the highlights to bring this beautiful magenta color into your drawing. Okay. Another thing we're going to do is we're not going to paint anything. We're going to do some chromatography. Sami, can you say chromatography? Chromatography is a way to separate chemicals um, using uh, a piece of paper, some type of special paper or some sort of solid matrix and some sort of solvent. So what I've done here is I've taken a little bit of the original juice and I've taken just a, the back of the spoon and I've spotted a little bit of this chemical, this compound, onto this paper here. And we're going to let this dry, maybe dry for like an hour. So we're just gonna let it sit and we're gonna come back to this later. Okay, time to start our chromatography experiment. Let's see how this works. Okay, so remember we spotted the cabbage juice here on the paper. This one got a little messy. This one is still pretty neat. You can see where the spot is. I took a piece of, uh, I took a pencil and I marked exactly where on the paper this was because the pencil marks are not gonna move. Only the, the colored compounds might move. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna choose a solvent I'm going to use uh, rubbing alcohol or 70% isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol. Now only have mom or dad do this. This is not something appropriate for you to mess around with. Because if you get it in your eye, that can be a problem. Or if you get it on uh, your clothes or other places, that might be problematic. So you're just going to want a little tiny bit uh, in your reservoir here. I chose a disposable container that I can throw away afterwards. Remember, this is not something that you can eat, so you probably don't want to put it into your cups or bowls. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this here, this paper, this filter paper, and we're going to touch it into the bottom of the reservoir. And we're going to allow the solvent to come rushing up from the bottom 
towards your um, spotted sample here. So let's see how this works. Now, once you do this, you're going to have to just let it sit for a while. So, okay, Sanmi, now let's see what happened with the chromatography uh, papers. Let's gently unclip these and take a look at what we see here. Interesting, okay. And let's see what this one looked like. This one, oh, not quite as interesting. So what happened for this one is I cut the bottom and I made the solvent front a little bit closer to where I had spotted it. So let's put this one aside. And let's put this aside as well. That's the solvent, that's the uh, isopropyl alcohol. So we're gonna leave this on the side. Let's focus on this strip here. So what we've done is we spotted this purple cabbage juice onto the paper and the purple cabbage juice moved up from this position where it was and it's moved along the solvent front. That's super interesting. It also changed colors a little bit here. So I wonder if this paper is a little bit basic. It's probably because it's art paper and it's supposed to be acid free. So I wonder if there's a slight basic nature to this uh, paper here. Anyway, what you're seeing is that uh, this, uh, this uh, chemical, this anthocyanin, is moving along with the solvent front because it's highly soluble in hydrophobic uh, 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 solvents. So that's really interesting. So this isn't the most exciting thing, but it's definitely something you can practice. For instance, if there were two different chemicals mixed in together, like if you're using spinach or a combination of spinach juice plus cabbage juice, and you gotta figure out, do I have a combination of spinach and cabbage juice or do I have a combination of a different type of juice together? What you can do is, you can perform chromatography to see what types of uh, uh, chemicals are in the juice or whatever substance that I have. So this is something that's really fun to do. So go ahead and give this a shot at home. Get some interesting juice, whether it's orange juice or it's uh, cabbage juice or spinach juice, spot it on some paper, just like this regular paper, nothing, nothing uh, terribly uh, interesting about this paper. Dip it into some sort of solvent, let it sit for a while in the solvent. You wanna dip it just a little tiny bit into the solvent, you can see the solvent level here. If I shake it a little bit, it's not that high. And you let that solvent come up and it's gonna start pushing that chemical up along the paper as the solvent flows through the paper. And it's gonna start pushing this chemical and you might be able to see if there are multiple types of chemical in the juice that you have that gives it a certain color. So that's a fun way for you to learn about uh, chemicals. So go ahead and give it a shot. Finally, the fun part. We're gonna take this leftover cabbage and we're gonna make a subji out of it. So I'm gonna get my pot and I'm gonna get my spices, especially my jira and my turmeric. And I'm gonna get a little bit of lemon juice and I'm gonna make an awesome subji out of my cabbage. I cooked up the cabbage. Here it is, you can see the cabbage is cooked up real nice. And let's go ahead and taste this subji. Okay, I got my fork here. I'm tossing it a little bit. Ooh, it's got this red color, this very bright red color. Okay, time for the taste test. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm, tastes good. Has that lemon juice. That's why it's got the red color. And that's why it tastes so yummy. Mmm, good, you can taste the sourness. Okay, so that's what you can do with a leftover cabbage. Okay, in summary, we've done a lot of fun things. We made cabbage juice out of cabbages. Remember, we were studying uh, a hypertonic environment that the salt made, which allows us to extract that juice and makes the cabbage get super wet. Then we got this really fun color. We added some acid and base, changed the colors up, and we also did a little bit of chromatography. Finally, these are our little tiny donkeys. We had a magic paint. The paint was purple to begin with, and then we added some highlights by touching it with lemon juice. 
Here's the second one that I did. I think this one turned out a little bit cooler. You see this has a beautiful dark purple color and the highlights are nice little pink, especially the ear, that looks kind of cool. So go ahead and have fun with cabbage juice. You can do some painting. You can use a combination of Sharpie and uh, cabbage juice to do some really fun uh, paintings like this. Okay, bye.